So, uh, we're doing brakes. Get it in neutral. Doing brakes on this uh, 7200 here. We've all oh, that don't look knock it off the jack. We're uh, walking this axle out to the end so that we can get the final drives taken apart here. We had to take the dual off, and uh, we got to also get the dual off that um, other side there. So. Okay, so he is walking this axle out. These are adjustable rear axles. All of our tractors are. They've got a bunch of grooves in the axle, and then there's a wheel in there that just walk it down through them splines there. But this tractor was set up for 30 inch corn rows. I wasn't sure if I was going to try smashing this onto the corn planter. And, um,. In case something happened to the 7290 or something, but um, we've got to get in here to take these bolts out of this final drive. Over here, we're ready to pull this 7200 apart. We've got a couple of bottle jacks in under the cab. But on this one, it's not like the 8120. It's got a cab mount that sits right on this final drive. Housing planetary housing, whatever you call it. So we got a couple of bottle jacks in there holding the back of the cab up. So now we're going to put the forklift underneath here and we're going to try to get this side off. <laughs> we got this right side apart and these brakes don't look all that bad now these brakes haven't been done that long ago and this disc is in decent shape so we're not sure Got some scoring on it. 
We're not sure if now maybe we don't have some transmission trouble. I mean, if you just look at the filings that are on my finger right there, it's, it's metallic chunks. And usually when you see that, it's an indication that you've got brakes going. That's why we went down this road. Uh, at this point, we're hoping that the brakes are bad on the left-hand side. If not, we're going to have to start looking forward in the transmission or we've got something going on in this differential. So, um, yeah. One thing about this differential with it having the cab mounts on the top, it gives you an easy way to take this off in there. So, we're going to have to wait and see what the left hand is si left side is like when we get that apart. Uh, Kaz is coming to help us finish this up. So, we'll have to see what we find here. But, yeah, not good. Alright, we're into the following day here. and Jake is here now. He's going to assist in doing the rest of this work. He's got all the new parts in on this side. We'll show you what these parts look like when we get the other side apart. He's thinking that the left side is going to be the side, well, we're hoping the left side is the side that's actually got the problem and shoving all this material into the oil and plugging everything up. So we've got everything just about ready to kind of bolt back in place on this right hand side. Then when we break open the left hand side, we'll show you what these parts look like. But the, he's got a new brake disc over here and it's the, the brake disc that we took out of this right hand side wasn't much more than what your new one is so we've got all new parts going back in on both sides and when, once we break the other side open we'll show you what that looks like as the parts go back into it we're on the left side now we're hoping this is the side that's got the bad brakes and this oil <laughs> look how dirty it is looks like motor oil disc there is the disc that's supposed to have the abrasive pad on it and that is gone Warped. there's nothing there that, and that is like disc shaped that is freaking warped I don't know if you can see that almost looks like a almost looks like a dish plate up in the center down on the outside. Here is the actual brake disc right there. And that has got the abrasive material on both sides and there's nothing left of this one. And then you've got this disc here, it's been metal to metal. It's taken almost an eighth of an inch off. Oh, look at this. That's cracked. Oh. Broke. So what would that be, like similar to a pressure plate? Kinda? Yeah. Hopefully that, yeah, look at that. Oh man, it must have got hot to break that just from... Well, not that we wanted to be doing this, but um, we're kind of glad that it is what it is. Now look at this material here. Brake material, not only brake material, but just metallic, pet, metallic filings from all that metal. This is what anti-seize is made from right here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
Now I'll get the piston out of there. Looks like the piston. Hopefully it didn't hurt it, did it? It's already halfway out now. Probably because it's already pushed gone out past as its far travel. as it can go. So this is the piston here. This pushes that brake out together. This is what applies your brakes here. So he's got a big O-ring. That he's got two O-rings, in inside one and an outside one. So he's gonna put some bolts in there. And then, uh, yeah. Metallic material, man. Oh, O-rings ride against that there. So the oil is, what is it, pumped in through here and it just pushes that out, right? Yeah. Pushes it out, push force against these plates here and then they squeeze against this brake disc. So he's got some new O-rings to put on there. And then we'll have to clean up all this metallic material. Wow. Goopy. Okay, he's got all the brake components in here, and then we're just gonna put this planetary and drive axle end up on there. All right, so the final drive housing is all on this left-hand side. You got a filter to put on, got the cab mount to put on there, and then we just roll the axle back on. This job is basically done here. Just setting the wheel uh, spacing now. Spin it, maybe. All right, just cleaning up the mess, pumping in some oil. And we're gonna wait to put these duels on. We're gonna run it around the driveway some, retorque these hubs, and then uh, retorque the inner wheel, and then we'll put the axle hubs on for the duels, and then we'll put the duels on afterwards. So we're, we've got this one's got a sight tube on it, so we have got 98 quarts in it so far, so we're almost full. All right, we're just getting the brakes finished up on this tractor here. The mechanic has just left. And this gentleman here is a real good friend of my uncle's. He didn't think I knew who he was. But I happened to be outside, and he wanted to stop in, say hello. We've been kind of shooting the breeze here for a few minutes. And he says his grandkids watch me, Colin and Logan. Right. So I said, let's just get the camera out for a quick second. So this is kind of a shout out to you guys, Colin and Logan. Poppy here. Pop, pop, yep. pop stopped in to say hello, and I said we'll do a quick little video of this. And very good. Yeah. So, yeah, you've been friends with Pat for 40 years. Yes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I can remember when I was a little kid. Remember we went down to Van Patten's that yep. one day and took that bowl back and yep. we ate lunch at the shanty. Yep. Remember that's right. the shanty? Yep. So, well. Uh, Hi, Colin. Hi, Logan. All right. Glad you stopped in. Well, thanks. Got grandma over here. She's, fil she's filming too. <laughs> All right. We'll uh, get back to putting the wheels on this here in a minute. Well, thank you. Okay, so I had a real nice visit with Bob there. He was telling me about his grandkids, uh, Colin and Logan. They uh, love watching the stuff that goes on on the channel here. And, um, I really liked uh, the conversation that we had there. So, uh, I am down in behind the old heifer barn on the old side of the road here. Just running this 7200 around in circles um, to try
try to get these wheels to seat in, get that wedge to get setting into place where it needs to be in the wheel. Once we get this back up to the shop, we'll retorque the, the inner wheels, we'll get the axle mounted hubs put on, and then we'll put the duals on there and we'll be able to finish this job up. I have to top off the hydraulic oil as well and in a day or so um, Jake advised that we should change the hydraulic filter. You've seen all that material, the brake material that was in that differential case and in throughout the brake components that came out of this tractor. So we'll let things kind of flush themselves out of the tractor. It'll get filtered through the transmission slash hydraulic filter and hopefully we don't see any more problems with this tractor. Now we don't really know what happened to this. These brakes were done on this tractor only a couple of years ago. This tractor's got 6,904 hours on it and we shouldn't have to do a set of brakes uh, so close in, in time here but we don't know. We might have had a guy operating that holding his foot on the brake and what the mechanic said is it could have been a situation where the brakes just got hot, warped the disc, and as soon as the disc warps you're going to have one part of that brake disc that's going to be coming into contact with the pressure plates or the discs or whatever. So um, it is what it is but um, at least they're done now and Hopefully we don't see any more problems with this tractor. Alright, so we'll get this up to the shop. We'll get the duels on it and we'll finish this video out. Right, and that is going to finish this job up. All ready to roll on out the door here. Hopefully we don't have any more problems with this tractor. We put a lot of time into it today. So we're going to use this tractor on the roller harrow for when we seed down. The uh, fields that we had wheat on, we're going to seed that down to al alfalfa. So here's the parts that came out of that tractor. This is the brake disc here. Of course, it doesn't have any material left on it. And those two plates there, that piece and that piece go together. That broke. So you've got the pressure plates, if you will, that go on each side. And this was wore down so much it cut such a groove in there and made it so damn hot that it ended up cracking that one uh, friction disc or pressure plate I don't know what it's even called there but that is the left side and then this is the right side here and this is basically like brand new these brakes weren't done only about 1500 hours or so ago and this is basically what a new disc looks like. There's not much. There's not much to these brakes. So this is the actual brake disc. And it runs in between these two plates here. Just like that. And then that center spline part runs inside that input shaft that goes in to the uh, planetary. And there's a piston that runs on the back side that pushes out pushes against everything it stops it squeezes against these two it squeezes these two plates together that stops this disc and then that's what stops your uh, wheel so that's gonna do it folks I want to thank you for watching and we will catch you at the next video